He was the rock star of the goal square. He had the good looks, the blonde locks and the exhilarating skills. There isn't a football lover who didn't marvel at his exploits in front of goal for Adelaide during the 1990s. They were amazing times, Tony Modra. Welcome. Thanks, Mark. It's good to be here. What are the memories? What are your memories of this? We loved watching you play. When I told people that you were coming on, everyone wants to see you and to see your highlights package. Uh, I think at the time I really enjoyed my football back then. I liked to give the crowd what they wanted to see. So if it was the odd mark or the goal, yeah, so be it. So The odd mark? <laughs> <laughs> there were three marks of the year and you were runner-up about ten other times, I reckon. Yeah, I, I, I guess so, yeah. I want to... I won a few cars. That leap that you had, just natural? I mean, I know you were a high jumper at school, but your ability to just, that vertical jump. I was, and I guess a few guys have got this sort of story as well. When I was at school, obviously, you have the end end, end, end kicking, and I was a, sort of a, a, one of the shorter guys at the time, because I didn't grow until late, and um, I was one of the ones, suckers up the front there that everyone used to <laughs> sit on, but that didn't last too long, and then I worked it out in the end that if I got up the back and, you know, had a bit of a jump at it, that'd be a lot better off. So. Geez, you squared up with a few blokes. Yeah, 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 I guess yeah. I did. Over. But the, the, the other thing about your game um, from memory is that as good as you were in the air, you were pretty competent at the ground level. You looked like a bloke who perhaps had a soccer background, did you? I did have a soccer background early. Um, I was, I was um, born at McLaren Vale and um, lived at Christie's Beach at the time with Nigel Smart and down there it was sort of soccer football orientated so I sort of switched codes every now and then so it wasn't really until I moved to Loxton when I was about 10 or 11 that uh, most of my mates were playing football so I tended to veer from the soccer away to football but it definitely helped me out I guess. AFL to burn not until you were 23. I was surprised at that. It was that. Why were you so late? I know you played at West Adelaide, but yeah. why so late onto the AFL scene? Oh, because I guess it probably was, it wasn't really my objective. I went down early and had a bit of a, a bit of a kick at Westies in my early days, under 19s and thing, things like that. But didn't really enjoy the lifestyle down there, so I moved back up home. And it wasn't until I was playing up there with my brothers and that as well that um, the odd person that ex, ex SNFL players were saying, "I'm wasting my talents up here. I should be somewhere else." Only eight games in your first year, 1992, and then yeah. you literally exploded onto the scene in 1993 with 129 goals. Yeah, I, I, it was funny. I, I, I had an opportunity in 1993 at the start of the year when Scott Hodges got injured, and I think we were playing the first game of the MCG against Richmond, and I got the call up then. So I guess I got the opportunity, and I, I took it, and um, yeah, it went on from there. 220 goals in your first 50 games. It was a massive start to your career, wasn't it? Did it sort of take you by surprise? Oh, I guess it did, but I was enjoying my football that much. And um, I guess at the time too, um, playing, playing AFL, AFL I, I was keen to you know, play against all these other teams that I used to watch on TV. So um, to get the opportunity to f not just play at home in front of all that crowd at Football Park, but just to fly interstate as well, because I'd never actually been in a plane before either. Really? Yeah, Is so I know, I, know a lot of, I know a lot of guys these days, they whinge about getting on the plane, but earlier on for me, you know, jumping on a plane for me was <laughs> exciting. Wow. So, yeah. So you'd never travelled, you'd never flown out of Adelaide before you started no, playing no, AFL? No, not at all. We used to just yeah. drive everywhere as kids on holidays and things like yeah. that. So to get the opportunity to play at the MCG and... You know, even Victoria Park back then. I mean, mm. It was just a great opportunity. That, that adoring crowd that you had at uh, Footy Park, I mean, you must have loved that. Oh, I did. Though. I mean, they love, they love their football, and I think um, I found out in the end the reason why they came through the gates to watch you try and take those sort of marks and things like that. So I just, you know, pretty much did, didn't, he did, didn't hesitate to try and... Um, help them out in that regard, that's for sure. I reckon you've taken about 80 marks that would all uh, justify the title of mark of, of the career, but is there, one, is there one in your mind that you like better than any other? Well, I think the... Uh, I definitely like the ride I did in Brisbane up at the um, Gabba in um, 94, I think it was, but um, I think the one that probably stands out to everybody is the one in 93, and I think that started my career off, and that's what made me realise how much the crowd enjoyed that sort of thing, and I guess at the end of it, um, when I took, the, I took the mark, I sort of got the hairs on the back of their neck as well, watching mm. everyone around. You didn't tell us that, mate. 93, which, which one was it? 93 was against North Melbourne, and I think it was on Ian Fairley and uh, Mark Micken was in the goal square as well. You went over the top know, of Mark Micken? Yeah, well, and I knew Tony McGuinness because being a penetrating, he was outside 50, and I thought, well, he's not going to quite make the distance. He's probably going to land in the vicinity of the goal square somewhere, so I was prepared a bit of a run up there and um, it wasn't until after I took the mark realising how much Archer was you know, on my hammer there so yeah. yeah. 
So I was did you like it as market? I think. Did you use set out to use the bloke in front of you as the as the launching pad, or did you just have the ability to just go straight up? Oh, I, I think it definitely helped. Um, getting the timing and everything right, and I think as the years progressed, it wasn't a matter of just getting the timing right. It was um, trying to dodge and weave a few people in between mm, as well, because mm. I think they got wind that I needed to run up. So yeah, <laughs> you sort of had to have eyes in the back of your head as well. Sure. <laughs>